98 FM's Dublin Talks. Call 6797 981. It is 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Jeremy Dixon here for a Monday. Start of a brand new week on the show. Now, first of all, the ways you can contact us, you can text or WhatsApp us on 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98 is our text or WhatsApp number. You can also send a voice note uh, to that WhatsApp if you know how to do one of those. Well, who doesn't? Uh, you can do that if you're in work and you can't get to uh, make a call. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98 or call us on 6797981. Now, I'll be coming to our first uh, topic in a moment, but uh, I just wanted to keep uh, 98 FM's Tom Malone here for a second to talk about, well, what happened at Croke Park yesterday, a hugely tense All-Ireland final and I know you sat opposite me on Friday and you uh, your prediction was that Dublin would uh, win by five or six points yeah absolutely didn't and happen it didn't happen no uh, the red card just before half time obviously had a huge bearing on things and uh, really this morning you would imagine that Dublin would be the happier of the two parties just because you know they played what over 40 minutes with 14 men yeah and um, still you know we're like when watching the game as it progressed, we're sitting there, well, are Dublin going to have their purple patch at the start of the second half? They didn't, but they still managed to keep that four-point lead. The goal came, that completely changed the uh, sort of path of the game in the second half. But, I mean, you just, Kerry is surely going to feel they've left it behind. So many Dublin players underperformed. Jack McCaffrey was unbelievable. Stephen Cluxton, unbelievable. Saved a penalty. What a game. What, what a game he What had. a man. I mean... Yeah. There were some rumours beforehand that that might be his final game for Dublin, and it was just like, I wow, don't think so. What no. a, what, I don't think it will be either. No. But he is thirty eight years. He will be thirty eight years of age shortly. So, um, wow, what a performance by him! You know, and like I said, a few Dublin stars didn't perform. We had the red card that obviously completely changed things. Um, but brilliant composure by Dublin. I mean, they were losing at, at full time. They were losing, and oh. then to just go and, and retain possession. And then, I mean. The Orchie lads were saying that Dublin would have robbed it if Rock had kicked that free. I mean, that wasn't really a kickable free. It was a, it was a shot to nothing. Oh, there wasn't a chance. I thought he, would, you know, he would drop it a bit short and then hope hope for the best. He was never going to get that over. Uh, mm. But th- those last it was seven minutes of out of time. Seven, minutes, seven minutes of out of time. Yeah. Um, those last seven minutes, my God, uh, the no, tension. I, I, <laughs> where were you? Where were you watching? This? I, I was I was watching it at home. Same on the as couch. myself. I was, yeah. uh, well, I, I'm glad because I wouldn't have wanted anyone else to see me. <laughs> <laughs> my young fella turned around to me. It's well, stage he's just coming up to five years of age he says daddy stop using bad language stop you just watch the match you certainly weren't on your own I think uh, on that front but uh, yeah brilliant I think Dublin would be the better for it um, I we were throwing a lifeline like that's we got a lucky break Absolutely, definitely think, absolutely. You know. I mean, Kerry squandered quite a few chances as well. I mean, you just look at the breakdown of Dublin scores. We scored one sixteen altogether. Uh, Jack McCaffrey got one three. Dean Rock got ten points. So the other what. You know, 12 players and subs only contributed three points between them. That's quite an indictment on the rest of the the of the players that were involved. So uh, y- you can't imagine that will be the same again. The question mark, will Jim Gavin ring too many changes the next day? I don't think he will, but it'll be a brilliant day. Six o'clock on a Saturday evening. Yeah, so I just mean, for people who don't know. Be yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah, so yeah, the- 14th of September, Saturday week, uh, the replay is scheduled for six o'clock throw-in time. So the lights will probably come on at some stage. That'll just be exceptional, won't it? It's going to be, a lot of people are going to be tanked up, aren't they, at that stage? I, I think, yes. Well, well I think my, my good atmosphere my good atmosphere is a little bit of a euphemism there, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's going to be an evening uh, kick-off or throw-in on, on Saturday. And, um, you know, as you said, I don't think he's going to make too many changes. Um, I can't see why he would. I don't think. There'll be one or two calls. Perhaps it might freshen up slightly, but as regards to so many names coming in... Uh, I, I, I don't think so. So many players were di- will be dis- disappointed with their own performances that I think one or two might be given a chance to atone. And Johnny Cooper sending off finally, uh, yes or no? Ah, yeah. It was just it was yeah, just yeah. persistent fouling. It's not. I mean, uh, the RT panel at half time got so head up about it, it just became ludicrous. But uh, yeah, look, he got the guy. He got he got him in an arm bar. That's a foul, like, and it was about his fifth or sixth foul. So you know. And do you think that I know the ref? Um, had come under a lot of pressure uh, in the lead up to the game. No, I thought so, he did you well. know, Sorry, you think I, he, I thought he did yeah, well. I think yeah. he had a great game. I mean, it could, there are particularly the last 20 minutes. I mean, there were so many times he just let it flow and it was actually the right thing to do because 
it, it looked like it was going to kind of form into a bit of a schmazz or something. If he'd blown too many frees, it actually just would have killed it completely. But killed the pace he the kind game, of yeah. allowed the ball just to kind of get out of those situations, get a bit of flow going. And he played lots of good advantages. You know, both sides got advantages in the right place where, you know, there's one where a dumb player was fouled and it was, then he skewed it wide and he brought it back for the free and we got the free. And Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think it was fair. I think yeah, absolutely. And I, you'd have to say... I'm sorry, it won't be the same ref for the replay. Sure, it won't. No, it won't, no, okay, which is okay. actually a shame. But, like, yeah. he, 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 he did an outstanding job. By the way, I, I thought it was kind of comical in the build-up that, um, you know, the Kerry lads are suggesting that someone from me would have a bias towards Dublin. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Anything the opposite, but, yeah. Listen, no. Anyway, thanks very much. And I did a fan home. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Saturday week, 6 p.m. throw in. And as Tom says, those evening throw ins, I've been to those evening matches in Crow Park, and they're they're very, very different to the to the lunchtime ones, to the afternoon ones. Uh, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, as a Dublin fan uh, who was screaming at the TV for, for 70 minutes yesterday, I think we were throwing a lifeline. I think uh, we should be very happy to walk away from, from that match uh, with a draw. 98 FM Dublin Talks And of course the chase is on for tickets now for the replay yeah, I feel sorry for anybody who paid uh, a couple of hundred quid over the odds for a ticket for that match yesterday and then walked away with a draw but however on to uh, matters uh, completely and utterly different Now you can text or WhatsApp us on 087 798 98 or call us on 6797981. And here is what I want to get your opinion on. A former Big Brother star, Kate Lawler, you may remember her. I think she won the uh, the second Big Brother, was it? Anyway, uh, she's a reality TV star. Uh, she was in the news over the weekend for saying that not wanting children is one of the last taboos facing women. Uh, her fiancé is desperate to have babies, but she says it's not something that she was put on earth to do. So they've set up this podcast together to help women who are still unsure about about having children. And she says that she often feels guilty about wanting children, but she says that she was not put on this earth to be a mother. And fair enough, a lot of women do feel that way. There seems to be this presumption that every single woman wants to be a mother, every single woman wants to have babies. Some women just don't want to have uh, babies and they should be respected for that but the issue here with her situation is her partner Martin has said that he does want children and there lies the problem. Now he has said that he will stay with her even if she decides that she never wants to have them and as it stands she doesn't and it's after sparking up a huge debate online in which I want to continue here uh, on the show about whether or not you could stay with someone who decided they didn't want children, even though you did. So here you have a situation where you have uh, a woman uh, and her fiancé, and she's pretty much categorically saying, you know what, I don't want kids. Kids aren't for me. This is not what I was put here to do. Um, there's more to life than, than, having, than having children. And... The husband, in, or the fiancé in this situation, is saying, well, actually, I do want children, but you know what, I'll stay with her anyway. Would you stay or could you stay with someone in a relationship who wanted something completely different than you? And at what stage of a relationship should you seriously have a conversation about having children? And then it also sparks up the, the debate about supposing you're in a relationship with someone who only wants one child and you want four how do you deal with this whole issue of children in a relationship? I'd love to hear from you. Text or WhatsApp us 87 Better still call us on 6797 What would you do in this situation uh, where you're in a relationship with someone, you're engaged to be married, and they have decided that they don't want children? Is that a deal breaker for you? The lines are open to you now. Let me go to Bernadette Ryan, who's a psychotherapist and relationship therapist. How are you, Bernadette? You're very welcome along to 98. Thanks, Jeremy. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? And one which is probably facing a lot of people that are listening at the moment. 
Yes, it is. It is a very tricky one, and it's, it's, I guess you could say it's a very thorny one as well. It's, it's a very fundamental issue for people. Um, I would just say, though, I don't think anybody was probably put on this earth to be a mother or a father. But while they're on this earth, they might decide to go down that road for a while. So it doesn't necessarily um, uh, totally define who somebody is. But I think um, when it comes down to it, you know. Tw- to be engaged and actually be then discussing, well, one wants a child and one doesn't, that's kind of like uh, leaving it a little bit too too late to, to discuss that because it is a big life issue. It's a, You know, you mentioned there about maybe somebody wants one child and somebody wants four. Well, you can kind of compromise on that maybe with like two or whatever. Two and a half. Yeah. Or two and a half. <laughs> yeah. But there's no compromise on I want children, I don't want children. There isn't really... You know, so now I would agree uh, that, you know, having children is not the only thing in this world. It's, it's, and a lot of people are choosing to go child free um, and do other things in life. And that's, that's perfectly fine if they're both on board, with it, on board with it. But I think it is a conversation that needs to be had fairly early on. Not necessarily on the first date now but, or, or to check out on, on, on Tinder. But I think it's a conversation that needs to be had early on. And I think one of the mistakes people can make is believing that the other will change. And that can happen around many things when you get together with a partner. Oh, I'll change that and her. But, but as well, you shouldn't force somebody... Like, in this situation where Kate Lauder is saying, well, you know, babies aren't for me. Her husband, now, I'm not saying he is for one woman, but her husband shouldn't be trying to force her to, to change her mind. Sure he shouldn't, because... Oh, should. no, absolutely not. But I think that therein lies, you know, sometimes people... You know, she says herself that he has always hoped, you know, or thought that perhaps she'll change her mind. But, you know, it doesn't look like she's going to change her mind. And if somebody is kind of in denial about if their partner firmly tells them early on, I do not want to have children, and they're living in the hope that they would change their mind and continue in the relationship, that can cause difficulties down the way. So when should they, a couple have this conversation? Obviously not on the first date, but as well, you know, if they have it a year down the line and then the woman or the man changes their mind, you know, what, what do you do then? Well, you know, again, it depends on the relationship and it depends on the couple. You know, for some people, it's, it, it, it is a deal breaker. And I think the earlier they realise that, the better. So they can, they can sort of uh, not be keeping their partner in, in false hope or indeed to maybe give themselves an opportunity to meet somebody who's like-minded about it, particularly if it's something very, very strong. Um, a lot of people tend to say, you know, at a certain stage in their lives, maybe in their late 20s or early 30s, they're having a good time. Oh, I don't want to have kids. And in this particular instant, instant she saw a child having a meltdown and went, oh, definitely don't want one of them. But I think most people who are parents would say, it is completely different when it's your own. So, you know, there is that factor in it. But I think if somebody is very clear from the outset, this is not the kind of life I want for myself. These are not, I, I don't feel I'd make a good mother or father. Um, I think then, you know, it maybe is, it behoves them to try and find early on a partner who shares their views because they probably have other ideas in mind. Maybe they want to travel. Maybe they want to, to have a career that just couldn't possibly um, take on the responsibility of children. So they may be better off trying to find somebody of like-mindedness, you know. So rather than, you know, putting it down there as, a, a, if you want to come out with me, I don't have children. It's more about, you know, it's part of this, the establishing the relationship about what people like, what they don't like, how they see their future. And if it blends in together and if it's of like-minded, that's terrific, you know. It doesn't always have to be. But if it's, it, it is a very fundamental issue when it comes down to it. Um, and you see, sorry, sorry for going across your bed. I think in a situation mm. like this, like uh, their situation where she doesn't want to have children and he's saying, well, I do, um, but I'm happy to accept uh, your decision and I'll stay with you either way. I have a feeling down the line that's going to cause a problem of resentment because, you know, if you if you really want children and your other half doesn't want children, you are going to resent them, are you not? I think so. I mean, you know, it doesn't always have to cause resentment. I mean, a person, you know, maybe he has decided, OK, I really love this woman and I want to be with her and, you know, I'm prepared to give in on this one. But if the person is kind of fooling themselves, that's, I think, you know, when it can turn into resentment. And again, he needs to have, he needs to figure out for himself how badly he would like to be 
a parent, how much being a father means to him, how much having offspring means to him. Right now, he might believe it doesn't mean too much to him. But actually, again, down the road, you know, people, you know, when we start to see that there is a bit of an end to this road we're on, you know, um, it, it could cause, cause resentment or he could change his mind. I guess, too, in this whole uh, scenario, um, I guess the opportunity is always there for a man to change his mind about becoming a parent, but it's not always there for a woman. Absolutely. By, yeah, once you get, once you get on to a, that a, stage, yeah. Yeah, she's on, a, she's on a time clock. Some women who all along have believed they don't want to have a baby change their minds when, they, when it comes to the point where they realise the choice is actually taken from them or will be taken from them shortly. You know, it's not a choice anymore. It's going to be, it's going to be a reality. That sometimes can be um, sort of, you know, prompt people to, to have a change of heart and they may, they may well decide to have a baby in their 40s. They may have left it too late. But I, I do believe that it's a, it's, it's a genuine and it's, it's, it's a valid choice and particularly for women, you know, there is that bit of pressure on them that, oh, well, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with a woman who knows her own mind and knows that she's not of the paternal type. She has no interest in having a child. She has other interests in life. And I think that's very valid. And I think women should not be put under pressure. But they do need to find a like-minded partner, as does the guy, you know. Absolutely. Thanks very much for joining us on 98 FM's Dublin Talks. That's Bernadette Ryan, who is a psychotherapist and relationship therapist. She's the woman in the know. She's the expert. Uh, and you've you've heard her advice there. You need to find somebody who has, who has you know, the same goals and ambitions in life. But what happens when that person changes? Changes their mind halfway through the relationship. I'd like to hear from you. Call us on 67979981, text or WhatsApp us or send a WhatsApp voice note to 87 798 like Ray did. Than you. Jeremy, there's not a hope. If that man is looking to have a child and <clears throat> and he's with someone that doesn't want to have a child, I, I know from being a father now, <clears throat> I've always wanted to be a father. And if I knew I was going to spend the rest of my life with someone, who didn't want to have a child if I was in the situation and not having a child at all. No chance. Not a hope. He needs to move on. No, he needs to move on. Uh, Kevin says, my brother was in the exact same relationship uh, and then marriage. I believe he thought he could change her mind once they got married. Um, yeah, see, that's the thing. It's very difficult to change someone's mind. And you shouldn't change someone's mind. But I'd like to hear from you. 6797981 is our telephone number. Would you stay in a relationship or could you stay in a relationship with someone who didn't want a family? The lines are open to you now. The sound of the city from Fur House to Finglas. Dublin Talks. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. It's 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Jeremy Dixon here for this uh, Monday morning. Hope you're enjoying the show. We're with you until midday today. And we're in the middle of a conversation all to do with what happens in a relationship when one person wants children and the other person doesn't want children. And uh, I was telling you the story about the former Big Brother star, uh, Kate Lawler, who says that children are not for her. Um, but her fiancé does want children but is prepared to stay with her even if she decides not to have a family, which I think I think it's the wrong reason to, to stay with somebody. I think if you have completely different goals in life, staying with a person like that, uh, you're just going to end up resenting them. And I'd like to hear from you. Text or WhatsApp us 87 9898 Or you can also send a WhatsApp voice note to that number like Sean did. Jeremy, I don't want to have kids, but my girlfriend of the last year and a half wants to. I've expressed to her I don't want to have kids, but she's convinced I'll change my mind in the future. But I won't. Oh, OK. That's uh, interesting. Um, let me just listen to that again, because that's... Jeremy, I don't want to have kids, but my girlfriend of the last year and a half wants to. I've expressed to her I don't want to have kids, but she's convinced I'll change my mind in the future. But I won't. Okay, so you're together a year and a half, Sean. You know, if you're having those sort of problems already into the relationship, you have to ask, um, is it worth going forward with the relationship? Because uh, if you don't want children, the chances are your your mind won't change. Let me go to Neve. Neve, you're on 98FM. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Grand. This is an issue for a lot of people there, including that guy, Sean, who we just heard the, the voice note from. You know, in a situation like that, what should he do? Or what should his partner do? I think he's been very honest, you know, and that's to be admired. He's, he's been honest with his girlfriend. He said, no, I don't. And I don't think anyone, male or female, should be coerced into changing their mind over something that they don't want to do. Um, if she wants children really desperately, 
then perhaps it's not the right relationship for them because you can't force somebody into being a parent. You both should do it for the right reasons because you both want to be parents. It's a, it's a really tough one. Yeah, I mean, is it worth, if you're in love with somebody and you're in, say for instance, that, that message from Sean, if he's in a relationship uh, for a year and a half, he obviously loves the woman, is it worth ending a relationship over something like that, you know? I think that they, obviously the two of them need to sit down and have a very honest conversation about it and see if they can go forward. I mean, I think it's, in the case of Kate Lawler and her fiancé, I think it's a really bad start to to expect somebody to sacrifice something very important to them. You know, I'll stay with her anyway. It's so... I would worry about the future, you know, when they start watching their friends and family having babies and the urge to be a parent is just as strong, I'd imagine, in a man as it is for a woman. So I'd worry about resentment further down the line, you know, when he gets older and... He looks back and says, oh, I could have had a family, but oh, you stopped me. She's not stopping him. She was honest with him. But that could be the resentment that, that creeps in, that you stopped me having this family. It's his choice to stay. No, but absolutely. Think, she's not forcing you. She's not forcing no. him to stay. No. Everyone's being honest. This is this is the point. But just like Sean is being honest with his girlfriend, everyone here is being honest. No one is saying, oh, we got married in five years down the line. Oh, guess what? I don't want kids. They're all being honest. But it's just a really tough one because if you want children, it's very difficult to stop wanting children. And if you don't want children, it's nearly impossible to start wanting I agree. That's the two things. I agree that uh, you will never lose that desire. I don't think you will lose that desire. You're either the type of person that wants children or you, 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 exactly. you're the type of person who doesn't. And if you're the type of person who does want children, you're not just going to be able to put that to the back of your mind and go, oh, you know what, I'll just accept it. But also, it's very hard and you shouldn't have to change somebody's mind who like this like this woman, Kate Lauder, who clearly doesn't want them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with not wanting children and women should be stopped making feel that there is. There's nothing wrong with not wanting children. Okay, but stay there for a second, Eve. Let me go to uh Bill. Bill, you're on ninety eight FM. How are you? Hello, Hi, Bill. Guys. How are you? You know, you believe they should split up immediately. Oh absolutely, yeah. I mean that's that's such a Oh, we get you back. Sorry, Bill. Bill's line uh, is gone. Let me go to Philip. Philip, how are you? Hey, how's things? Now, you feel differently about this. You feel that uh, it's her choice, but it obviously is her choice, but that the man needs to respect that. He does. I mean, look, I think she needs to hear him out. I think she maybe needs to talk to some of her friends. Uh, I think he needs to find people in similar situations. But essentially, if she's not ready, if she's on a career path, if she's on the way up, and that woman just does not feel it's it's a time in her life for kids or maybe feels like at this time in her life she doesn't feel like having them he has to respect that her mind could change in three to four years time situations change somebody dying in the family can change your mind you can say do you know what I want kids I don't want to leave nobody behind but at that moment and in this time she doesn't want to have them her opinion needs to be respected you know so he should just uh, put up and shut up should he not put up and shut up but I suppose just give it the time Give it extra time. And if he really feels like she just isn't going to have them, if I'd start. That man's young. Um, there's loads of time. I would I would move on. If it was me, I would move on. That's me personally speaking because I have a child and I would definitely want more kids. And sorry, what, uh, what is your situation? You're, you're in a relationship, are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a child. Yes. And um, if, you know, if, if before that child came, if I, the person didn't want to have one, or my current partner didn't want to have one, I'd feel a lot different. And I did move on from someone already who didn't want to have a child. I, I actually moved on. Oh, well, tell me about that. Tell me about that situation. Yeah, well, I was in a, in a, in a relationship. It was going very, very well. It's been on for about four to five months, I think, and the person told me straight, look, you know, I, I, I don't want kids. And um, all them good feelings, everything that we had was just turned and inside of me. I just felt completely different. And, uh, you know, we separated ways. And when she asked me, why are, why is this happening? I said, we're not getting on. And if I'm being quite honest with you, I said... Oh, sorry, you, you, did, you didn't tell her the real reason, did you not? Well, the real reason we weren't getting on. But I did then at the end say, and you, did, you know, you did want kids either. So I said, that's something fundamentally for me. If we were to progress or go on in life, I just couldn't see us really getting on if I know you don't want to have kids, and I do. So that was... That was where that kind of ended. And did she give a reason why she didn't uh, want any? 
she's already had one and um suppose it could have been tough for her you know so so uh, she had one from a previous relationship yeah, did she okay yeah, okay yeah yeah and it could have been tough for her bringing bringing the child up in fairness to her she was a great mother she was a very good person and she just kind of probably felt it hurt the time in her life was no I don't want any more, and but I did, and and that's where things. So you 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 were prepared to to sacrifice a relationship, which I assume you loved this woman, did you, Philip? Oh yeah, there was strong feelings there, yeah. And you were strong. prepared, you were prepared to such was your desire to have children, and it's interesting hearing this from a, a a man's point of view as opposed to a woman's point of view. Your desire was such so strong to have a child that you were prepared to end this relationship with this woman who you cared about because she didn't want another one. Out the gap, Shane. Sorry, say that again. I was out the gap. Done. Really? Yeah. Because you yeah. obviously felt that there was no point in uh, carrying on the relationship. No, I wanted a family. I wanted, I wanted a child. And okay, stay there for a second, uh, Philip. Uh, have Bill back there. Bill, what do you want to say on this? How are you? Um, I, I think that that couple should split up because at the end of the day, she wants kids and he doesn't. She'll resent them. And it goes any four to say three, four, five, six years, they split up eventually. They really will. I mean, you know, I'm married with three kids. I have two kids from a previous relationship. And to be honest, when I met my current wife, I didn't want to have kids. But, you know, I think if you love somebody, your whole attitude will change. You know, kind of way. I mean... And I think you're, I think you're in, a, in a situation where a lot of people are now that they have children from previous relationships. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I have, happened, I have friends who are in this position who they have yeah. children from previous relationships. They're now back on the dating scene and they're asking themselves the question, you know, if I get with another person... Do I do I have to start a family again? But that wasn't a bother for you, was it? Starting no, a family? No, no, not me, not me. Per- no, to be honest, like my 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 two older kids are twenty three and twenty one, and I got married when I was forty. Jesus, Billy, and now I I'm forty nine now, and I've got three kids, eight, five, and three. If I go to work for a rest, not a kind of way. But um, I know, but I know I mean, the feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I met my current wife, like I didn't want to have any more kids. But I mean, as a sort of the, it wasn't something we spoke about. To be honest. But as the relationship progressed in the couple of months and everything else, this is the woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, and I was on anything to make her happy. And when the comments came up about kids, because I loved her that much, it, it kind of worked too, in a kind of way. So when we got married first, you know, within a couple of months, she was pregnant, and, you know, I thought I would have been going, oh, Jesus Christ. I was absolutely over the moon because I loved this woman so, so much. I wanted to, be, you know, make, make, be happy and blah 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 blah. And like three kids later, we're married nearly ten years, and here we are. You know, but I do personally believe that couple just split up because if she wants kids and he doesn't, she'll end up resenting him. Okay, he so will, try to try trap him or get pregnant on purpose or something like that. So and much, then it, it's just bad, you know. So much like the the situation with you, Philip. You think Philip did the right thing just to walk to walk out and say I, I can't continue this relationship? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because you, it's just it, it's just a resentment from from one angle. And Philip, so, sorry, let me go back to Philip. Do you ever regret that decision, Philip? Not at all, and you should and never regret, to regret decisions. No, don't regret anything. You got to happen for right. reason. You got to move on. He is right, Jeremy. Yeah, I just think um, he is right. But was there never a chance that she might change her mind, Philip? You know when you know, and you know when you don't know. When I knew, <laughs> so there was that's n- keeping it short and sweet. I just knew that that, that wasn't going to happen. There is. There is circ- certain circumstances with people where they'll say, I don't really, and I don't, and you're kind of, you read between the lines and you go, I just think the person isn't, it, it doesn't feel it's the time of life. I was given a point blank, no. Okay. Like, well, see, see that, 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 do, do you want me to just, uh, just ask that chap a question? Yeah, go ahead. Did he, did, did he say that, that that girl in question had um, a child from a previous relationship? Yeah. Yeah, okay. With no disrespect to you, pal, that, that pregnancy could have been so horrific for that girl that she just wasn't prepared to do it again. Could have been, yeah. Could have been. Could have been. Like, you know, kind of way, I mean, you know yeah. it, there could have been plenty of issues there. I'm just wondering yeah. if you actually asked the question as to why. She didn't want anymore. Yeah. It wasn't that specifically. It was just the, the idea of raising a child and having the free time to herself, I think. Oh, that's so really... That, so, so that's what that's what she, that your feeling was, that she just didn't want another <laughs> child. She, she didn't want to have to go back to, to go and changing nappies and stuff like that. She didn't go into into it specifically, but what I gathered from it was that it, so much time had passed, and she had the child that um, that uh, you know she just said, "Look, I've done it already, and I'm not prepared to do it again." You know. 
Okay, stay there for a second. Have a listen to this message that just came in to us. My God. Um, and this is from uh, someone who won't come on air. Okay. I told my ex that I never wanted children. I had one already. He insisted I would change my mind. I never did. Unfortunately, underhanded, underhanded tactics took place and I ended up getting pregnant. And then he ended up walking out and literally leaving me holding the baby with no family and having to give up my job. People should not be forced to change their minds. If only uh, one person in a relationship wants a child and the, the other doesn't, I think it would be fair to leave that partner to find the right person uh, with the same wants and goals in life. My God, that's that's crazy uh, situation to where you were literally, uh, I presume it was underhand tactics. I presume he said that uh, he was using protection and he didn't use protection uh, or something like that. And that's how it happened. And then you were left on your own. Another text message from Orla. A friend of mine was married. Uh, the wife didn't want kids. Um, so so he got the snip. Uh, X amount of years later, she had an affair and they split up. He is now in his late 40s and hates her for making him have the snip and now not married due to uh, her affair and no kids. That's a conversation for another day. Um, you know, uh, couples who are sometimes, or men who are sometimes pushed into uh, into having the snip because it's very, you know, if you do that, well, it can be reversible. But um, it's difficult, Philip. I have to say, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of support coming in for what you did, and a lot of people saying that you uh, did the right thing and that you were very uh, brave for ending the relationship. Will you please tell that man, Philip? Uh, I commend him for walking out in that relationship. It would have ended in disaster. Do you ever do you ever Thanks hear do you, do you ever hear from the woman? Have you ever heard from her? Uh, I pass that woman regularly. I would say hello and I would try and talk, but she's not interested. I, she's I think she resents me a lot for finishing it and moving on and that's fine and all but I did be as respective as I could and I and I did at the end say like I, I apologise and I did wish her all the best in the world and that's, that's just the way it is and that's probably the way it is for most people in my position now And do you know if she's in another relationship now is she I, I don't I don't but I hope she finds happiness I have to say, it's a, it's a very, uh, and I don't mean to sound condescending, it's a very grown-up attitude, Philip, and very, uh, you know, it's a very mature attitude, and it, it mustn't have been easy uh, to do what you actually did uh, to, to end the relationship uh, over something like that. But I, I think in the long run, I think you did the right thing because, you know, had you stayed with her, you would have ended up resenting her and, you know, you would have, you could have stayed with her for five years and that would have been five years of your of your life that you would have wasted uh, with a relationship that's not going anywhere. So thanks very much uh, for sharing your story with us, Philip, on the show and opening up to us. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny because I only, I only responded with a text message and then before I know it, then I'm bringing out a part of my life on the radio. I didn't <laughs> expect it, just so let everyone know anybody who... Is knows it? me from where I'm from. I hope no one thinks, God, he's coming on here, splurging out all of his stuff. I only respond yeah, you've, you've said, in my opinion. <laughs> you said absolutely. Is it your first time on a radio show, is it? Ah, uh, it, No, it's not my first time on a radio But it's your first time saying talking about something so personal as that. Oh, well, God, I, didn't, I had no intentions. I just responded <laughs> giving my opinion. And then I was. someone said, I didn't even know I was on the radio. I got, I got a call from a Dublin number. I didn't even know until I heard Well, there you go. Nobody, nobody knows who you are, Philip, anyway. Okay, <laughs> thanks for talking to us. Hey, thank you. Cheers, thank you. That's what this show is all about. It's about uh, talking about stuff that's happening in your life and talking about your feelings. And a uh, huge reaction to, to, to Philip's story, but I would say 99% of people uh, supporting his decision. And uh, if you are in that situation, hopefully that topic uh, gave you a bit of food for thought that uh, in a relationship, and I'm by no means a relationship expert, but when it comes to relationships, you need to sit down with the person from an early an early stage, no matter what it's about, no matter what it's about, and discuss what you want and what you don't want uh, in relationships, because that's how problems uh, arise in relationships. When uh, person A wants something, and uh, person B doesn't want that. And that could be about anything. That could be about, you know, living abroad. It could be about wanting a family. Uh, it could be about the job you do. It could be about anything. Anyway, thank you very much for all your calls, your comments and your texts. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. Now, I have a question for you. If you have ever worked in a job that involves dealing with the public, okay, so that could be anything. That could be uh, a waitress, a waiter, a uh, shop assistant, cabin crew on a plane, maybe used to work on a plane, anything, or one of those telephone people who take calls, you know, one of those uh, uh, customer complaint people on the other end of the phone. No matter what job it is that involves you dealing with the public, I have a question for you. Have you ever had to deal with a customer from hell? 
We want to hear your customer from hell stories. We were talking on the show on Friday about an incident that happened in a shop uh, about a, you know, a customer's child getting sick in the shop. And this WhatsApp voice note came in straight after that topic and it got us thinking. Have a listen to this. It's all about a girl uh, who works in retail and her customer from hell. Lads, can you please bring up on the show customers who just wreck your head, like wreck your head. I work in retail and twice this week I've had a woman coming in and I don't mean to be rude, but she's clearly a large and she keeps buying medium jeans, right? Bringing them back and then complaining that we're labeling our jeans wrong when clearly she's just buying the wrong the wrong size. And like, how are you supposed to tell her that she's clearly a large? So she was in with me screaming at me twice already this week, asking to speak to my manager. And in the end, we had to just tell her uh, that we were going to bring it up with head office, like as if we're going to do that, just to get rid of her. But like, it just wrecks my head. What is wrong with people? And I feel in retail, we have to put up with the most crazy people. Am I right? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you probably are. Okay, so that's a message that came in on Friday uh, from someone who works in retail talking about their customer from hell and you heard what she what she said there um this this customer keeps coming in and saying those jeans are the wrong size they don't fit me i'm a medium when clearly she's not a medium and she's shouting at her and it got us thinking there's a lot of you listening who have uh, worked in uh, businesses or industries where uh, you have the customer from hell and we want to hear those stories now and i've seen them a tickets to give away uh, for some lucky callers who uh, happen to be on the show Text us or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98 or call us on 67 97 98 1. Every single person, including myself, I'll give you my one in a moment. Every single person who has ever worked in the business that involves dealing with customers, we all have stories of customers from hell. What are yours? Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. The sound of the city from Kilbarrick. To Kiltiernan. Dublin Talks. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Good morning, it's Jeremy Dixon here with Monday's edition of Dublin Talks. Now, we are talking about customers from hell and your customers from hell stories. Uh, if you are unlucky enough, and I say that as someone myself who's done it, to have worked in a job where you have to deal uh, with customers. I mean, I we deal with listeners here on the show, but if you know they're annoying us, we can cut them off fairly easy. But if you work in a uh, you know as cabin crew or in a hotel or as a waiter or in a shop, and there's a customer standing in front of you uh, screaming at you, there's not much you can do. And uh, it was sparked off by this message that came in during uh, Friday's show. Lads, can you please bring up on the show customers who just wreck your head, like wreck your head. I work in retail and twice this week I've had a woman coming in and I don't mean to be rude, but she's clearly a large and she keeps buying medium jeans, right? Bringing them back and then complaining that we're labeling our jeans wrong when clearly she's just buying the wrong, the wrong size. And like, how are you supposed to tell her that she's clearly a large? So she was in with me screaming at me twice already this week asking to speak to my manager and in the end we had to just tell her uh, that we were going to bring it up with head office like as if we're going to do that just to get rid of her but like it just wrecks my head what is wrong with people and I feel in retail we have to put up with the most crazy people Am I right? Thanks. Yeah, you are absolutely right. As someone like myself who worked as a waiter for five years, uh, I can vouch for that and I'll have a few stories I'll give to you in a second. Uh, I'd like to hear from you if you want to win yourself cinema tickets. Text or WhatsApp us 0877 98 98 98 or call us on 67 97 98 1. You're a customer from Hell Stories and it doesn't have to be about the job you're working at the moment. It could be a job you had uh, many, many years ago. Let me go to Joanna. How are you, Joanna? Hi, I'm great, thanks. Now, you have a few customer from Hell Stories. First of all, what, what line of work uh, did you work in uh, when this happened? Oh, yes, I used to work in hotels uh, in a few different countries in Europe. Oh. Uh, one of the stories that I comment on your post on Facebook was from Crete. Okay, so you're about working You're working in a hotel in Crete. Ago. Okay. Yeah. And about 13 years ago, we had a couple there uh, coming in for the honeymoon. I don't really remember where they were come from. That's not really important. So for the whole week, as they were staying in the hotel that I was working, they were kind of okay. You know, they didn't talk much to the staff. They didn't really, you know, talk to the other uh, people that were staying there, kind of stay on their own, you know, fair play. That's what they like, you know, okay. 
So after a week, when they actually <laughs> were leaving, one of my friends, uh, were, she was cleaning the room after them, and she found a huge letter with loads of complaints about the hotel and the service and the music and really, really everything was included then. So as I wrote in the comments, one of the complaints was, for example, that the smell of the flowers was too strong. <laughs> or the, the sorry, sun. Sorry, this hotel guest complained about the smell, yes. of the, the smell of the flowers. Smell of the flowers, and we're talking about Crete in June. No, <laughs> no, no, were, were the flowers very smelly? Was there something wrong with the flowers? No, no, they, they were beautiful. They, the smell was actually really nice, you know. We're talking about the tropical flowers in the hotel's garden. Yeah. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. And she, it, and she complained about that. What, what, yes. what do you say back to someone who's complaining about the smell of flowers? Uh, t- to be honest with you, me personally, I didn't say anything. I just turned around and walked away. Uh, and I left my manager to deal with it because I, I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> now, the second complaint from the same couple was that the sun in the morning was too bright. <laughs> so hang on. Too a cu- bright. A, 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 yes. cu- a couple on their honeymoon complaining yes. to you. So what exactly yes. What exactly did they say to you? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a, comp- I have a complaint no, to no, make, Joanna. They- <laughs> they didn't actually say this directly to us at that moment. They left the letter, and everything was written in the letter. You know, during the whole seven-day stay, as they were with us, they actually didn't say anything directly to us. Yeah, we did. I, 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 yes, I hate people like that. You did, didn't even have the guts to complain uh, no. to your face. <laughs> and what did they expect you to do about the sun being so bright? What, what, what was the hotel supposed to do about that? I, I'm guessing we should turn the hotel around. I have no idea. <laughs> so the sun was coming. The sun was coming in the uh, the the hotel window in the morning, really, really yes. bright. Imagine yes. that increase, and it was waking them up or something, was it? Yes, yes, exactly. Now the second, the, the third complaint. Oh, there's the third one. Okay, go on. <laughs> oh, dude, there was a few actually. We had too much seafood in our menu. You too much what? Seafood in too, our menu. Too much seafood on your menu. Yes. And that on was, Crete, in the restaurant on Crete. So they're on a Mediter- Mediterranean island yes. and they're complaining about fish being on the menu. Yes. Was this the same couple again? Yes, this is all coming from one couple. What an now, absolute pain in the arse yes. they must have been. Now, once a week we used to do like a Greek night at the swimming pool, you know, like a party for the people that came into the hotel. It was like a traditional Greek night with the music and food and you know, alcohol and everything with dancing. So uh, the Greek night uh, wasn't good enough for this lady as well because uh, she couldn't understand the Greek song that the people were, you know, like singing and Joanna, 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 they're just assholes. Pardon my yeah. French, to be honest with you. I don't, and I thank you very much for your call. I don't know how people uh, put up with complaints like that about the sun is too bright and the the, the flowers, uh, the smell off the flowers is too strong. Jeez, some people just absolutely wreck my head. Some great stories there yeah, coming in. Keep them coming in. Text or WhatsApp oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Or better still, call us on six seven nine seven ninety eight one. If you've just joined us, we're talking about your customer from hell stories every single one of us has a customer from hell story uh, and i would like to hear uh, yours let's have a listen to this whatsapp voice note from chelsea oh sorry yeah. i'll get that back when the uh, when the line is working perfectly i was a wedding uh, coordinator says christina and the bride requested that the mother-in-law um, be in a particular room in the in a house outside the hotel her mother-in-law called two weeks before the wedding and went crazy and demanded to be in the main hotel. I had to deal with the complaint and not charge the room and not mention that it was her future daughter-in-law's requests <laughs> in the middle of a family drama. I, that's the one job I'd say that you get more complaints than anything else uh, being a, a wedding coordinator because you just have bridezillas um, who are just demanding X, Y and Z. But imagine demanding that your your mother-in-law doesn't stay in the same hotel as you. Anyway, keep those texts and WhatsApps coming in. 87 Back with more stories in a sec. Don't go away. 
It's 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Jeremy Dixon here for Monday. We're going to get more of your customer from hell stories in a moment. And also we'll be hearing from a man who got a wedding invitation and he's absolutely livid. You can find out why in a second. But let's go to Sarah Jane with the top stories. Thanks, Jeremy. Good morning. Dublin City Councillors have been told to scrap a part of their Metrolink plans. They want two underground lines to be added to Metrolink to serve UCD and Knock Line. But the NTAs warned that the plan makes it impossible to take Metrolink to the planning stage. Councillors and the public have till the end of today to make submissions before a final decision is made. A seven-year-old boy has died after being knocked down by a truck in Ballymun yesterday afternoon. Guardi are appealing for anyone who saw the collision to contact them. 2.1 billion euros to be invested in the health service over the next three years. 480 hospital beds, 30 primary care centres and two emergency departments will be funded under the new HSE plan. Over a billion euro will go into projects including the over-budget National Children's Hospital. And a former Strictly Come Dancing star Ola Jordan has announced she's pregnant after undergoing IVF. The dancer told Hello magazine that she'd been trying to start a family for three years before turning to fertility treatment. Now you're up to date on 98. 98 FM. Call 67979981. We're listening to your customer from hell stories. For those of you who've ever worked in an industry where you have to deal with customers, we have all had to deal with customers from uh, hell. And we want to hear your stories. You can text them, WhatsApp them to us right now on 0877 98 98 98, like Chelsea did. So I walk in a salon and we have had the same customer vomit and also soil herself while in the chair. God. On hot summer's day, can you imagine cleaning that up? <laughs> so this woman came into the salon to get her, her nails done and then ended up ended up soiling herself on the on the seat. My God Almighty! But you, I don't. Can I just say to that girl, Chelsea, if I saw it myself in a barber's, the barber's that I go to, I would never go back there again. I'd be so embarrassed. To go back there again, I'd pick a different uh, barber's. Uh, David says, I sold a kettle to a lady and she rang the next day saying she couldn't use it. So I called over and showed her how to use the kettle. She called back uh, to us a few days later with a court summons. Oh, my God. Uh, She was suing us, claiming that the kettle was causing her stress issues. We just gave her the $34.99 back. I have a feeling I know where you work, David, because I have a friend who works for that same company and is regularly dealing with Egypts like that, gobshites. Uh, keep those uh, messages coming in. Uh, 87 98 Your customer from Hell Stories. Uh, and Keep, how are you? Hi, how are you? You're very welcome along to 98 FM. How are things? Uh, things are okay. Now, I tell a story every day. Now, you work... Every day I have a moment. Now, to, sorry, are we, are we on speakerphone there? Can you take us off speakerphone? It's... Uh, Not very yeah, easy. one second. Okay, or I'll be complaining to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the customer complaining. Uh, now you work for a computer technology shop, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, give me your customer from hell story. I have loads. Oh, well, the worst the one, one then, please. Yeah, I have the one customer. She she student uh, across the road. There's a college from my shop where we work, and she keeps in. She just when I get the phone fixed, it's a smashed screen so i don't know practically what is wrong inside the phone so i told her we can fix the uh, screen and that's the price we agree on it i fix the screen and she's saying camera is not working other things are not working so i told her i don't know because you bring the phone in the shop to just get screen fix okay and so th- th- this woman this woman percent. yeah this woman dropped her phone and just cracked her screen she brought it into you uh, and you said well i'll just fix your screen and then she's saying it's your fault that everything else is broken on the phone yeah Yes. And was it? Did you break, did you break the camera? No, no, I didn't. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm working for the last 12 years. And uh, in, this, in, in this industry, so I know clearly what I'm doing, but I have the, these type of customers probably once a week. And they say they want to get something fixed and they don't know what is else inside. And look, I will fix only what they're going to tell me. I don't know what else is wrong until they're going to tell me. And do you? And how do you remain patient when, like, did they, they, they scream at you? Is this woman screaming at you? Is she giving out? Screaming at me, she'll say that she'll ring the guard. And actually, uh, oh, well, she said she was going to ring the guards over her camera being broken on her phone. Yeah, and actually, once the guards came in the shop and they say, I explained my side and the guard. In, <laughs> uh, she explained her side and the guard says this is a civil matter. So she rang the guards about you uh, yeah. not, about you not fixing the camera on her phone. 100%, yeah. And the guards actually came? 
Yeah, Graf came and they say that because she was screaming down in the shop and I have to ring the guards to please come come in the shop and please take this lady out because she... <laughs> oh, my God. Me, you know? And I can't do anything. I, I, I can't go near her, you know. This woman obviously really wanted uh, her phone fixed. Um, and, I, what, and what did the guards say when they arrived? Did they sort it all out? No, they, they told her... She, Oh, she can go to the consumer court if she wants, but she can't scream here like this, make a hell, you know. Other customers are, will be, like, will be go out from the shop, you know, they won't come inside. I don't know I don't know how you put up with it uh, and keep uh, when the customer is screaming in front of you I just wouldn't have the patience for it let me give you my story and keep the, keep your stories coming in uh, text or whatsapp 87 98 uh, I was a waiter this is me by the way saying this uh, I was a waiter for about five years uh, in a lovely restaurant uh, in Dublin 4 and uh, we used to have this woman that would come in she'd come in at the same time uh, every Sunday after mass she used to get 11 o'clock mass and she would come into the restaurant uh, normally at about 10 past 12 for lunch and uh, when she would arrive in we'd see her coming uh, towards the restaurant and we'd all go do not sit that woman she was well we had the name for her I won't give you the name on the radio but do not sit that blank uh, in my section I do not want to serve her anyway she was sat in my uh, section uh, one day and she would complain about anything she would find something to complain about and I kid you not the one day that she was uh, serving me everything was going grand I gave her a starter in the main course and she was uh, happy as Larry and uh, it came to dessert and she ordered uh, an ice cream with chocolate sauce for dessert and I brought her out the ice cream with the chocolate sauce and I get the fingers clicked on me sorry excuse me waiter come over here come over here I have a complaint oh Jesus what's this about um, what, what's wrong uh, was your meal nice yes it was I have a problem uh, with this ice cream the problem this ale battle axe had uh, about the ice cream that I served her was the ice cream was too cold and it was hurting her sensitive teeth and she's screaming at me saying how can you serve ice cream this cold I have sensitive fillings you're after hurting my fillings I'm going to have to go she starts saying that she was going to charge me for her dental bills because I was after damaging her teeth with cold ice cream Suffice to say, the next time uh, the woman arrived, I put the ice cream into the uh, microwave oven and gave it to her, melted, and she wasn't too impressed. Uh, Kev, how are you? You're on 98. How are things? Hey, morning, Jeremy. Have you ever, yeah, had, have you ever had ice? Topic. Have you ever had ice cream that was too cold? <laughs> no one's ever had an ice cream that's too cold. Oh, I hate um, it. I hated that woman I with a passion. I swear to God. I'm, sa- I'm starting to hear a pattern about the gender of these complaints, if you know what I mean. Oh, what? They're, all, they're, they're all women? <laughs> it's the majority yeah, I, heard, I didn't, I heard, I didn't even notice that myself man maybe men don't complain I don't know no we don't no no, no. Oh, look 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 oh, look I my story is I'll tell you now okay I worked in a high end men's clothes company right without going into names and okay don't do, same, yeah, yeah, don't name where they are now. don't name where they are or anything like that I can if you want, if you want no no don't, I'm not to tell you not to name them right, I won't, I won't. right okay so you, you work for a clothes shop go on yeah it worked. No, I don't do it anymore. But a okay. particular famous person came in, half puff, came in, la- just as we were closing up. Here we go. Right, it's going to be a late one. Anyway, turns out uh, he and his manager uh, needed a lift back to their hotel. It was up where RTE is. So Donnybrook, isn't it? Yeah, Donnybrook, yeah. yeah. The big hotel up there. The unfortunate thing is, um, they were doing a certain type of tobacco in the back of the car right? and you can't buy this over the over the shop counter put it that way and they just wanted to stop at every pub on the way so this was every- a famous person uh, is this person still alive or dead no no he's no longer with us okay I tell, can i can i tell you who i think it is i know i can tell you who it is but that's up to you i was just asked not to i don't know if he's didn't i don't know if he's dead you can you know just don't mention the shop what, what, who, who was it uh, alex higgins alex higgins okay alex higgins was drunk in your shop uh yeah you, you had to drop him to the hotel and uh in the back in of the- Donnybrook. i left no, i left at seven o'clock place goes up it's normally five half five and what he ended uh, up bringing you on the pub crawl did he yeah literally we hit every pub more or less every pub on the way to that hotel and, and they're smoking, well, whatever they were smoking in the back of the car. I got home about 2, 3 o'clock at a.m. <laughs> I ended up having a drink. I'd say that was some experience driving around uh, Alex Higgins, uh, who's half cut and smoking whatever he's smoking in the back of the, the, back of the car. Yeah, huh. yeah, that's why, that's just, I'll never forget it. Never and, forget it. Yeah, but did he complain to you or anything, or was he was he happy enough for you to be dropping no, him around? They, no, they were, no, they just wanted to go, and they just, I was their taxi man, basically, that's what I was, I was a, <laughs> an unpaid taxi man. They were like, kind of like, oh, yeah, we're going to, um, the one, I can't remember the one over the bridge, and 
Uh, and people, uh, the thing was, because he's who he is, like he didn't put his hand in his pocket and I was like, oh, will you come on? I'm going to be at home studying for an like, accountancy exam. Okay, so you didn't even get a tip off him? No, 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 no. I said, I just, at the, the late bar, the bar was, they came on the bar open in the hotel and I was like, look, I have to go. Well you, well, you know when you when you pick up Alex Higgins uh, for a lift, you know you're going to be ended up driving him around to uh, to every single pub going. That's a gas story, I have to say. Um, but at least he wasn't a customer. From, well, was he a customer from hell? Yeah, I suppose it was if you were driving around for, for hours on end. Uh, Jerry says, if you can't deal with customers, don't work in the service industry. Uh, oh, Jerry, uh, that's clearly coming from somebody who has never worked in the service industry. How in God's name, Jerry, can you deal with a woman who's saying that the ice cream is too cold? What should you do? Just smile at her and blow on the ice cream here <laughs> I'll melt it for you um, absolutely ridiculous people who work in the service industry and I'm saying this as someone who did it myself they deserve respect uh, from customers and uh, nobody deserves to be screamed at uh, in their job uh, I used to work uh, for a well known airline um, a check in desk uh, when flights were cancelled because of bad weather Customers would literally scream on us um, like it was our fault. Uh, I remember during the ash cloud. Oh, yeah, remember the ash cloud in um, Iceland, wasn't it? During the ash cloud, when all the flights uh, were grounded, people screaming at us that their plane couldn't take off. What was I supposed to do uh, about the ash cloud? Uh, Absolutely uh, horrendous. Uh, People are lunatics in um, airports. Let me go to one last call, and that is Liam. How are you, Liam? What was I supposed to do? Now, turn, now, Liam, don't mention the name of the store, but it was a hardware store. Uh, tell me about your customer from hell. My customer from hell, but the first one was I sold a lot more. I sold a lot more. Okay. Yeah, turn off the radio, Liam. Okay. Yeah. Now. Okay, so you sold her a lot more. I sold a lot more to her son. Okay. Now, on the same day, I sold Dave Fanning a lot more. I sold Pat Ryan a lot more. And I sold other products to Dave Fanning. But this day, I remember getting it. There was a letter sent to head office, which I was based in the head office in Blackrock. And this was just from a random customer, was it? This was from a random customer. Okay. And uh, it was A the, customer who bought the same lawnmower that Dave Fanning buys, okay. Uh, all right. He, okay, he yep. Was going, he was going to sue me. Okay. He was going to sue me because the shed went up on fire because of the lawnmower. Oh, no. And His, mo- his mother's shed went up on fire. I sold him a, a, a cordless lawnmower. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Yeah, yeah, cordless lawnmower. And did we they... Did, the first, did, did we were the first company to bring it out. Okay. This did, was in 1998. Okay. And uh, did the uh, did the lawnmower start the fire in the shed? The lawnmower started the fire in the shed, but he was suing me. He was going to sue me and sue the company. Oh, sue you personally? Yes, because I sold it to him personally <laughs> at the Ideal Homes exhibition. Oh, my God. This gets better, right? I was called out the house to the house. I knocked at the door, the husband opened the door, and he wouldn't let me in through the house. I had to go around the back garden. Yeah. And I looked at the shed, and I went, holy jeez. And I walked out, and the son was there, adamant, that that, he was going to sue me. Look look at my mother's shed, that someone could have been killed, blah, blah, blah. And the woman came out then, the elderly lady, and I said, what exactly happened? She said, I charged it. And I put the petrol where I used to always put the petrol. Oh, no. I swear. <laughs> That's so only she... one. And I have another one. And were they screaming at you, saying that you could they have killed someone? They sue me personally and sue the company. Go on, give me the other one quickly. And I don't even know where she would have put the petrol. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that's another... Where would you put the petrol in a, in a cordless electric uh, motor? And what's the other story, very quickly? The other story is, it, I, I was called out by a woman to say that uh, a certain lawnmower that we did, I'm not mentioning the name, but it was no. uh, supposed to stripe your garden. It was supposed to watch your garden? A stripe. stripe oh, yeah, yeah, make stripes yeah, of the grass. Me yeah, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. It's a big company. OK, go on. This woman was ringing and she said... My lawnmower is not striped. So I, eventually, I was living in Rohini. I was based in Black Rock. And I told her I'd call up on this Friday evening. Up to Tala. Right? Yeah. I went up and I went out and I said, Now, love, she said, will you just show me how you cut the grass? And she was going willy-nilly all over the garden. <laughs> and I said, no. She said, you're supposed to up and down, up yeah. and down. That's how it's striped. Straight lines, yeah. Yeah. And I started it to show her how to do it. In the meantime, it started lashing right in, right? And the woman had the girl to turn around. I said, right, they, they, they know how to do it now. You can't leave my garden like that. You're going to have to finish it. 
So what you wanted you uh, who well, works in the, the shop? I was in a shooting. I was in a shooting toy. I was a sales manager. And she wanted you to cut her grass all, in the in the I middle of the rain. She wanted all her grass cut. I don't know where these people get off. Thanks very much for your call, Liam. Never work for a hardware store. Uh, one final one. I can't talk, uh, but I used to work in uh, Charpusters, uh, who, of course, my God, for those of you who don't know, Charpusters, like Extravision, they used to uh, stock DVDs. You'd rent DVDs from them. And I would have a nightmare uh, with a woman urinating occasionally while using the sunbeds. Yeah, I used to be able to use the sunbeds. Uh, she would urinate uh, on the sunbeds. I wouldn't believe it myself, only I saw it constantly. Oh, my God. Some, as I said, if you do work in the in the retail industry or in the service industry where you deal with customers, uh, you have my you have my admiration because I just wouldn't have the patience uh, for any of that stuff. But some some great stories uh, on that, and um, I think you need to be a certain type of person uh, to to work in. Um, industries where you deal with customers because you just need to have a lot of patience and when someone is screaming at your desk you just need to be able to nod the head and go yes 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 three bags full 98 fm's dublin talks it's 98 fm's dublin talks for this uh, what day are we at monday um a post that was written by a 25 year old student has sparked a huge debate online and i want to share that with you his name is craig and he wants to complain about something to do with wedding invites. And it's all to do with evening-only invites. Now, if you uh, got married in the last 10 years, uh, did you do such a thing as evening-only invites? Or are you someone who's gotten, in the past, evening-only invites to a wedding? How do you feel when you get them? Here's Craig's uh, post, which was uh, posted online over the weekend, and as I said, it it sparked a huge debate. Here's what Craig said. I had not heard of evening-only invites, where you're only invited to the evening bit, but not the actual wedding or celebration. I didn't hear about them until about a year ago. Then suddenly I received quite a few invites for evening-only. I went to the first one and decided I couldn't go anymore. Either invite me to your entire wedding or not at all. If I'm only good enough to come to you at the end of the night when you're already married and everyone is already a bit tipsy and fully fed, then I couldn't be important to you at all. If you don't have a lot of money, then your wedding should either be able to accommodate everyone you want there or simply invite less people. I would rather a no invite then an evening only invite. I accept that a bride and groom can do what they like on their wedding day, but that doesn't mean I have to have an opinion on evening only wedding invites myself. Am I the only one who finds them tacky? I would be ashamed, says Craig, to send out an evening only invite and never would. How insulting. <sighs> now, he got that off his chest, didn't he? And when we read that message in our meeting as well, it divided opinion among us as well about uh, these evening-only uh, invites and whether or not they are an insult to guests. Now, I got one last year, I'll be honest with you, uh, and it was a wedding that was on in Drogheda, and it was a uh, Thursday. I know the person fairly well. I uh, got the invite, and it was an evening-only invitation to Drogheda. And I have to be honest with you, I said I was busy and didn't go. Because I felt the exact same way that uh, that Craig feels. If you haven't got the decency to invite somebody to the whole day, don't invite them at all. Because, as Craig says, you're inviting someone to arrive at their wedding at 8 o'clock that night when you don't even get to see them being married. Yeah, you miss the meal, the best part of the day. You're literally an afterthought. I, I would agree with him that it is an absolute insult to just invite somebody to the, uh, to an, the afters of a wedding or an evening invitation. But I'd like to hear from you. How do you feel about this? Do you agree with myself and Craig? Is it an insult? Is it cheapskate? Text or WhatsApp us. 0877-989898. Or better still call us on 6797981. He's a bit peed off. He's got four uh, evening-only invites in the space of a year and he's just refusing to go to any of them. Are they an insult? I'd like to hear from you. The sound of the city from Perrystown to Fort Marnock. Dublin Talks. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Okay, we've hit on the nerve here. I'm just looking at the reaction uh, literally five minutes uh, after I mention it. 
And, uh, whoa, well, a lot of people are very upset about this. If you've just joined us, we're talking about uh, Craig's post, uh, which appeared online over the weekend and sparked a huge debate. And I won't read it out again. But basically, uh, in the last year, he's got four wedding invites, but they've all been evening-only invites. And he's a bit peed off with it. Uh, and he says, let me just read out some of the quotes. He says, either invite me to your entire wedding or not at all. If I'm only good enough to come in at the end of the day when you're already married, uh, then I couldn't be important to you at all, says Craig. Uh, if you don't have a lot of money, then your, weather, your wedding should either be uh, able to accommodate everyone you want there or simply invite less people. And uh, a lot of you are getting triggered by this. Uh, if you are being triggered by it, text or WhatsApp us. Uh, 087-798-9898 or call us on 6797-981 text for me Jeremy did you say you refused to go to a friend's wedding because it was in Drogheda no that's not the reason I didn't go to the wedding uh, to that person I, I love Drogheda uh, it's a lovely place and it's a lovely hotel the D is it called the D Hotel in Drogheda the reason I didn't go was because it was an evening only invite uh, and I'm not driving an hour up the road to Drogheda uh, at 8 o'clock to stay for 3 hours no thank you uh, they could have invited me to the whole thing and I would have gladly gone and I would have given them a 200 euro present so they lost out uh, let's go to Dublin 8 first and James how are you James? how are you doing? now James uh, you you got an, an evening invitation to a wedding recently whose wedding was it without naming the person's name but what family relation was it? Uh, no what happened was I was best man for my brother yeah and uh was two lads got me knocked around with weren't invited to the wedding. Now I did not make the wedding list out when I was best man. I didn't get a plus one and they weren't invited and they fell out with me and I'm a brother. So you didn't get a plus one uh, to your your own brother's wedding, did you not? My own brother's wedding, no. Oh, okay. Uh, and did you have a plus one that you would have liked to bring? Yeah, uh, would have, yeah. yeah. There's always someone you can get. I'm sorry, two of us, two of his best friends, uh, did only got an afters. They only got invited to the afters, did they? Yeah, and they fell out with me. <laughs> oh, like it was, <laughs> like it was your fault. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you think it's insulting to just give somebody an invite to uh, the evening? Uh, I think if we've been friends for a long time, uh, yes, because it happened to me. I got a text the day before. And these and these lads, the two lads that only got a, a, a well, an afters uh, invite to their mates' um, wedding. I presume they were very upset about this, were they? They were, yeah. They fell out with me, and they actually. I actually had to meet one of them and uh, oh. have, have a bit of tales with him and kind of like take up with him. Like. That's, that's why I stay there for a second James that's why I hate weddings it's the one thing I hate about organising weddings and stuff like that because you always end up falling out with a family member that's why we got married abroad cut out all the crap uh, you tell them we're getting married uh, abroad you can either come or you don't come uh, and if you don't want to come that's your own business and if you, you do want to come uh, happy days Anne-Marie how are you? Hi, how's things? Grand, your family, it's normal for afters invites in your family, is it? Yeah, it is, because like, there's so many of us. Like, I've got though, five uh, aunties on one side and ten uncles on the other side. Like, you know, so it was, if, if we want to invite somebody to a national party, we could count our cousins now. We've got over 44 uh, cousins, like, you know what I mean? That's just uh, cousins and invite their partners then as well. So it's, it's just, it got, it got out of control, so... Well, it's just normal for us to try to do this. Your parents, like my parents, will be invited to the whole wedding itself, and then after that, then my um, myself, my uh, siblings, they will be end up going to the afters. Like, so it's just what's always been that way. And have they ever been insulted by it? Say, for instance, you, are you married yourself? Are you? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, when you were getting married, um, say for instance, okay, say a niece or a nephew. Did you invite them just to the the evening? No. You invited them to the whole thing, did you? My nieces and nephews, they actually came because I had, qu I had quite young children at the time, so uh, they, they were able to play with the, with the cousins, like, you know what I mean? Okay, so, but did, did you have close family members that you didn't invite to the whole day? Uh, yeah, I had one or, one or two of them that I kind of got on better with the rest, of the rest of the family, like, you know, so I did invite them, but the rest of my cousins and, uh, and their brothers and sisters, I never invited them. I invite all their parents, but not them. 
And does it create ill feeling? No. No, not in your family because they're all you're, they're all in the same boat. Yes. Okay, but supposing you got an, e an evening only invite next week. Supposing uh, a friend of yours uh, got married and sent you sent you an evening only. Would you be insulted? I've I've actually had family members get married and I haven't been invited at all. So <laughs> it makes no difference to me at all. Like you know because. Um, my family are quite close knit, but at the same time, you all grow up. You all kind of get your own lives, you do your own things, and same with friends. You know, you're you're be friends to say that you're best friend for years, and that be the friend you would invite to your wedding. Kind of. Yeah. You see, the the problem is, as soon as you start doing these evening invites, people coming at it from the other point of view, as someone who's got them, you do get insulted when you get one of these. But I have gotten them, and I haven't because. Well, maybe yeah, maybe I'm just a, maybe I'm just a sensitive soul. Is that my problem? I'm a bit too sensitive. You could be on certain subjects. Yeah, I think so. To be honest. Okay, yeah. stay there for a second, Anne Marie. It's me that's the problem here. Uh, am I the only one that feels that way? Myself and Craig. Uh, is it an insult? I'd like to hear from you. Uh, call us six seven nine seven ninety eight one. Let me go to uh, Dave. How are you, Dave? What's the Craig? No, Dave. You'd prefer a, an evening invite. Damn right I would. I mean, your man Craig sounds like a whiny little bitch, to be honest. I think maybe, like, mm. from the tone of his message, uh, maybe that's why he only gets him fights in the evening. Oh, yeah, nobody wants whiny Craig at the, at the wedding. Yeah, oh, look, it's piss bag himself. So why, uh, why, why, is it, um, why is it better just to get the evening only? Man, I'd rather, like, if it was a close friend or family member, fair enough. You, you know, you could understandably be a bit hurt if it was in the evening only thing. But when, like... The cost of going to a wedding, like the last wedding I was at, cost us about four or five hundred quid before we even left the house. Okay, it is an expensive thing, but if you go to the uh, the afters, do you not have to? Uh, do you not have to buy a but, present? No, but man, think about it. You go to the afters, you don't have to give them a present. You don't have to give them money in a cart. You don't have to be worried about de being decked out in a three piece suit because everybody's half cut when you get there anywhere. Short and pair of jeans or a pants to do you? Do you know? Yeah, but you he, don't have to sit in the church and listen to some priest bore the whole off. Yeah, but listen, listen, Dave, Dave, get. I, Getting the, getting the invite just for the evening is more or less saying, OK, this is, this is how I feel about it. You're an afterthought. That's what it is. You're an afterthought. Um, you know, we had to make up a few more numbers. You weren't important enough to go to the full day. Just come along at about nine o'clock for a couple of hours and that'll keep you happy. Now, I'm sorry. Nah, that... man, I, no, nah, I don't think that at all. Like, think about a weddings nowadays, especially in Ireland, right? They cost, like, the guts of a deposit for a house. So for a lot of people, they're like, okay, well, we have to invite this family member and this family member and this family member. And then, you know, there's loads of people they want to invite, but they're like, you know what, come to the afters. Do you know, I, I don't see anything too insulting about that. You don't think it's an afterthought? I don't think it's an afterthought. No, if it was a close friend or family member, fair enough. But, like, if it's somebody you know well enough or, you, you, know, that, you know, they're an acquaintance of some sort, they're like hey, I'm getting married, you want to come to the afters? I've been asked that a bunch of times. Okay, stay there for a second, Dave. Let's have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note from Jason. Yeah, James Kane, the invite, not only to the, to the afters, it's down by you. Oh, sorry, Jason, I can't hear a word you're saying. If you are sending a WhatsApp voice note, by the way, turn off the radio in the background when you do it, because uh, it just comes out like that. But Jason is saying that is insulting. Uh, here's another text message. I went to my friend's hen do abroad. Oh, well, wait to hear this now. I was... I was invited to my uh, friend's hen do abroad and went, and uh, I was only invited to the evening of her wedding. Uh, I think people who send out invites just to the evening part are just looking for more money and gifts. And also, the invite I got was via a Facebook message. Now, I have to be honest with you, um, to get an invite to a wedding via Facebook, I'm sorry, I wouldn't be accepting that. That's like, you know, at least send me something in a, in an envelope, you know, rather than... Facebook. How insulting is that? Uh, let me go to Paul. How are you, Paul? Hi. hi. How, How are you? things? Man, none of us. Now, what do you want to say? Uh, we, were, we were invited to a wedding a, a few years back, and at, at, at the time, I, was, I wasn't um, invited to go, only, only my partner. So there was no other partners uh, invited during the day. So it was just like one, one single person has to go. Which is, I always find, and it's a conversation we had a couple of months ago about the not having a plus one. It's very odd when you don't put a plus one on a wedding a yeah. wedding invite. Um, and did you get did you get an invite to the full thing or just to the afters? No, just to to the afters. But like, well, like we were married at 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 the time, and there was this whole to go, and not me. 
and uh, and then that, that happened a few more people at the wedding too and then when we got if an invite to go then join the night I was like not a chance if, if I'm not going to be invited to join the day why should I go at night so you also find it an insult do you if oh it's... yeah oh yeah yeah why, why though because it's just like as you, as you says, I said there it's like it's like you're you're nearly a second hand to go like they're, they're sort of putting it out of the way yeah it's literally like going to the cinema but only going to the cinema for the last 10 minutes of the movie. You've, like, you've missed three quarters of the movie um, and you're literally arriving at the end when it's pretty much nearly nearly over. So will you, would you reject uh, an evening and only invite now? Well, yeah, I would because I, I, think, I think it's a bit, a bit rude. Plus, it doesn't, it doesn't really happen anymore, actually. If it's going to go, it's going to go all day because it's expensive to go as well. Like, during the day, do, 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 the care of our, our partner has, has to get dressed. Jeff all tanned on whatever you have to do. So, by the time you even leave the house, it's 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 five hundred euros. And then if if you're staying over on the night as well, then it's the next two hundred. And and if so you if really you do if you do only go to the evening, do you have to still give a present? Uh, some some people do and some people don't. I know when I got married back in two thousand and eleven, uh, right, the set the second man, I uh, I, uh, I I was getting all these Yankee candles and all that stuff. As presents, everybody got Yankee candles when they got married yeah, uh, yeah. B- back then. So you you agree with me and you agree with this guy, Craig? It is a it is a joke. It's yeah, a, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's, it, a, it's, it, an, it's it insulting. Is, it is. I had a war because I wasn't even even invited during the day, and my partner was. So it was just like, well, one of has has to go pick pick who wants to go to the wedding. Stay there for a sec, because I want to do... Because a lot of people are now talking about, about this, the whole thing about presents, and I want to do a poll now in a second to find out uh, how people feel about presents for the uh, afters of a wedding. First of all, let's have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note. Uh, if you want a WhatsApp voice notice, uh, it's 87 98 This is from Eddie, who's a big fan of the afters. Insulting me, Art. Put on your big boy pants and just bloody go. I'd much prefer um, the evening invite. You know, turn up. There's a good atmosphere. Everyone's half cut. Just join in. Weddings are the most boring thing in the world. You're stuck on the one table for hours while dinner's being served. You're hanging around at church. Nah. No time. You're only man. Yeah, each to their own. Yeah, a lot of people are texting in about whether or not. Uh, let me read out this message from uh, Hazel. She says, uh, while you're talking about this, uh, can you please uh, settle a debate? I'm having with my husband at the moment. Uh, we are going to a wedding next month, but it's just the afters, uh, as it's a girl I used to work with. Can you please tell me, do you have to provide a gift if you're only invited to the evening uh, of a wedding um, because I'm not sure of the etiquette? Uh, and I'd love to find out... Uh, what is the case with that? Uh, when you were going to the uh, the afters, Paul, did you bring a present? Uh, no, see, I I didn't go. You see, oh, you didn't go at all. No, oh no. So if I, like if I wasn't going to be inv- invited during the day, and then my partner was, so why? Oh, sorry, why, I, did, I didn't realise that you snubbed the invitation because it was a it was an evening invitation. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't go at all. No, Ooh, okay. no, I, I I said, well, like, why, why should she be invited during the day? I'm not, I'm not blaming my partner. But why should one person be invited and then not the other one? And then oh, all of a sudden, oh, but so we we'll put him to the evening. And Jesus, that's, Paul, that's you, you, hey, Paul, you still sound very hurt about this. Thank you very much for your call. Let me do a poll to find out uh, what the etiquette is about this because I'd love to know myself. Um, when you are invited, here's the question. When you're invited to the evening-only part of a wedding, okay, the evening-only part of a wedding, uh, do you or should you provide the couple with a present. Text yes or no to 87 Yes or no to 87 98 Okay, so here's the thing. You're invited to a wedding next month. It is the afters, the evening-only invitation. Uh, you're pretty much an afterthought. You're down the end of the list. You're not important. They're just inviting you for a couple of hours. Do you give them a present? Yes or no? to 87 98 That's what Hazel wants to know. She's going to one next month and uh, she wants to know should she provide them with a present. Uh, it be interesting to find out uh, whether you do or you don't. As I said, I don't go to the evening uh, invites anymore, so uh, it's not an issue for me, but it is for a lot of you. Do you give a present? Yes or no to 87 98 It'd be interesting to find out how people feel about this. 
The Sound of the City from Sagart to Sutton. Dublin Talks. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. It's Jeremy Dixon here with you until 12 o'clock today and this is an issue that every single one of you has had to face at some stage. We started out having a conversation about uh, whether or not it's an insult to be invited just to the evening part of a wedding and then Hazel uh, wanted to know whether or not if you are invited just to the uh, to the afters, whether or not you should provide people with a present because the whole thing about weddings I always find is uh, you can lose you can lose friends over weddings and I know people who have lost friends over weddings because of a range of different things and it could be down to something as stupid as myself and my missus get invited to uh, the afters next month and we decide to go we decide to go to the afters and we decide that we're not going to provide them with a present and they're opening their presents the next day and they go oh look the Dixons were at the afters. Any, any presents from the Dixons? Anything, anything in an envelope there from the? Oh no, oh so the Dixons didn't give us a present. Um, and then you end up falling out with friends uh, for life over something as stupid as that. So that's what we're trying to find out: whether or not you should provide somebody with a present if you only go to the afters. And a huge reaction to this, Maria. You're the first. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Rana, well, you have a strong opinion about this. What happened to you? Um, well, I was invited to an afters this year um, with, well, it was with my other half um, co-worker. It was his wedding and he just, you know, he gave an afters invite to anyone that worked in the garage that wanted to go. Yeah. And um, we went anyway and we brought a gift. I got a set of Newbridge mugs, which were about 30 euro or so, and he put 50 euro in a card and we didn't get a thank you for it. Oh, okay. So you you spent eighty quid on a on a present just for the afters. Yeah, just for the afters. So I which, won't which, be doing it again now. Which was very generous because it didn't cost them a penny to invite you to the afters. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah, that's it. And we didn't even get any of the you know the food that they bring out in the evening time. We didn't get any uh, of that. And, no, you get shag no. all. You you get a cold sandwich or something like that. That's normally all you get. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So. um yeah, I won't be getting the gift again. Like, you know, a, a thank you card would have been nice to get, but we didn't get anything. So and that it, lady that texted me bringing a gift. And if she wants to get something, I won't put money in a card. I would just buy something. And is that, what, is that what you're miffed about, Maria, that you didn't get a thank you card? Well, a bit of appreciation. Like, I would be one that would um, um, say thank you to everybody and I I would be annoyed at myself if I didn't say thank you to someone you know so I'm kind of like a little bit of appreciation would have been nice you know especially for a wedding we made the effort to go you know ah, yeah but what difference does a thank you card make I mean it's just a little you know and sometimes when couples get back from their honeymoon and all that's the last thing on their mind to say send a thank you card did you put your name on the present I'm trying to find out you know did they did they genuinely forget that you gave the present Yes, no, what I did was, and I thought it was a brilliant idea, um, I got it actually from a kid's party, to write on the card and stick it the gift and wrap the card in the present. So the card was stuck to the gift. Okay, so the, 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 the there's, no, there's no doubt in your mind that they, they didn't realise that the present was, was from you? No. And the little card uh, that they would have sent you would have made all the difference? It would have, yeah. Now, maybe they sent one to the company and maybe my other half didn't say anything to me. <laughs> now, can I ask, I'm just looking at some of the messages coming in. Are you being a bit sensitive about this, that you're saying, you know, oh, I'll never do it again, I'll never give another present again? Well, to be honest, Jeremy, it probably depends on who it is. Like, if I was invited to a cousin's after, I probably would get something. But if it was a work situation like that again, I wouldn't. So you feel that you threw 80 quid down the drain, uh, you didn't even get a thank you, and um, I suppose, you know, I have to be honest with you, I'm going to have to ask my wife now when we get home. Now, our wedding was a good few years ago, but I didn't look after, most husbands don't look after the uh, the thank you cards, but Jesus, I'm, after listening to yourself now, I'm thinking, I hope to God that she sent out thank you cards to all the people who gave us gifts. I didn't realise people got so upset about not getting a thank you card. It's just to acknowledge it, Jeremy. Like, you know, at the end yeah, of the day... Yeah, but did they not say thank you on the night when you gave it to them? No. Oh. Like, we get, we didn't give it to them personally. We just left it up with all the other gifts. You know. And how many years ago was this? This year. 
Oh, who's out? So that's why it's still a bit raw with you. Stay there for a second, because uh, Darren has an opinion about this. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I didn't say thank you to my guests. I thanked everybody there. Do you know what I mean? I spent 25 grand on a wedding. I'm not going to spend two or 300 just to keep someone's sensitive side going because they want a thank you card. Would you ever cop on? Yeah, that's to you. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it wasn't Darren's wedding you were at, Maria, was it? No. I... That, because that would have been very awkward. Uh, he's saying you're just being a bit too sensitive about this whole thing. Maybe I am. I don't know. Um, but like I said, yeah, maybe I am a sensitive person anyway, so maybe maybe I am kind of being a bit... Okay, say there, say there for a second, please, uh, Maria. There's another angle on it. Uh, Maria's upset that she didn't get a thank you card for the wedding. And I'm being deadly serious with you. Uh, I didn't do the thank you cards uh, for the wedding because it's, it's not something I do. But uh, I didn't think people got obsessed about them. Uh, another, another Maria. How are you, Maria? Hi, how are you? You're not as sensitive as the first Maria, are you? Um, well, no, I'm not ringing. Um, I'm I'm ringing on behalf of my daughter. Okay. And um, she didn't. She had a very small wedding, um, but they had to. When they were inviting people to the wedding, they 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 had to cut out everybody, aunts, uncles, cousins, because they couldn't invite some and not invite others. Yeah. So the only thing that they could do, and it went down very well because they couldn't afford to have a huge wedding. Um, so they had their their bridesmaids, two bridesmaids, they had the groomsmen, they had both families, and I think they had four um, very close friends. And after that, no aunts, uncles, cousins. Okay, so very intimate. And it was accepted. It yeah, was accepted. very intimate. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was accepted. It was very acceptable because, because there were no exceptions. And what do you think of the uh, the whole thing about giving a present if you only get invited to the afters? Were, were there people invited to your daughter's uh, afters? Oh, there were. It was a huge after. And did they, did they all bring presents? Did she got anything up to 300 euro from some of the aunts and uncles. What? Someone gave 300 quid when they only got invited to the afters? Yeah, yeah. Because they understood that they, like, they didn't have a big wedding and say we invited these aunts but we won't invite these aunts. They just excluded... Everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's certain at a certain level. The numbers were at that, so there. Um, so nobody was insulted. Now I have to be honest with you, Marie. You're. You, you... The people who went to your daughter's wedding are a lot more giving than I am because I would not. <laughs> I would not be giving somebody three hundred quid when they didn't even invite me to the full day. No, but this was an aunt. Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what aunt it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they they understood that they understood their predicament that they weren't having a big wedding. It was a very intimate wedding. They understood and accepted that, and they they weren't um, they, they weren't able to turn around and say, yeah, well, you see, you invited. This aunt, you invited these yes, two. Yes, yes, it's, e- it's either all or nothing. Yeah, no, I get you. Thank you very much for your call, Maria. Uh, Steve, very quick point about Maria's uh, issue. Is that right about the thank you cards? You think she's right to be upset, is she? Yeah, I'd be upset. Ah, lads, lads. Well, you're rich now, same way, sensitive, and you're getting sensitive all that evening, anyway. Okay, we're all sensitive today. I'm sensitive, but I'm not sensitive this morning. What's wrong this morning? But listen, I'd be, I'm not sure, I'm a bit worried now it can be sent out. Because we got a lot of lovely gifts, you know what I mean? I'm hoping that my wife did the right thing and sent them out. Well, that's the first thing. In fact, as soon as the show is over, I'm going to text my wife and you should do the same thing. Yeah, that's the first thing I want to do, yeah. So you think Maria's right to be upset about this, is she? Yeah, especially when she bought a present and she's not really a relative. It's only a small little thing, you know what I mean? Like, they were good enough to go to the wedding. And I think that's what's our issue. It's not really the present. It's yeah, but hang on, Steve. You don't... Um... You know? When someone gives you a birthday present, you don't sing, send them a thank you card. Oh, but you don't go down to the to the house and get wine and dine for the evening either. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so ha- it's like they're spending a few bob on you. You probably got a dinner. Um, it's just etiquette to say thank you. That's all. You know what I mean? I wouldn't get too sensitive. I wouldn't not talk to the person again. <laughs> but it, it would be something that I'd say to me. Well, they say thank you a lot. You know what I mean? Well, let me ask Maria. Are you going to speak to this person again? I probably won't see them again, no, ever, oh, oh. because, uh, no, not being bad, uh, he's moved jobs, so he's not really there anymore, so um, I probably won't see them, but that doesn't bother me. I, I would imagine, um, is, he, does he, is he from Dublin? Don't name his name now, but is he from Dublin? Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine, because this, this is a very popular radio show, <clears throat> um, I would imagine he would hear this back, and... <laughs> I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm telling you, no, he will. People always hear these things back when they hear things on, on Dublin Talks. He will hear this back, and you know what he's going to do? I'd say you will have a thank you card uh, in the post in the next uh, the next week, I'd say. 
Yeah, maybe. Oh, 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 oh God, she doesn't seem too hopeful. Uh, Robbie, how are you? You're on 98 FM. What's up? I just have a vision, Robbie, of this man, uh, Maria's, the one that Maria's wedding. Uh, I just have a vision of him listening to this show right now getting cold sweats because he doesn't realise the obsess that he's after causing Maria by forgetting to give a thank you card. She needs to relax. Who, like, need, who needs to relax? Maria. Like, what, what are you going to be like after your wedding? Tell your missus, oh, quick, get like 500 Hallmark cards there. We need to thank everyone for coming to the office. I'm getting married in March, and if I was to invite everyone to my full wedding, I'd have over 200 guests. You can't invite everyone. So people who come to the afters, you're still getting an invite to the wedding. You're still being thought of. No, nah, that's not the wedding. That's just, uh, that's cold pizza and sandwiches. That's all that is. Have you ever went to the afters of a wedding? I went once, never again. And were you talking to the bride and groom? Yeah. And did they turn around, ah, thanks for coming? They did say thanks for coming, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. There's your thanks. <laughs> Card sent out after a wedding. Come on, I get married in March. And I'm telling you now, if I'm inviting people to my office, they'll be getting a card off me. I've spent enough on the day. I'm not spending more money on cards. I've them out with them just so they feel appreciated. So hang on, nobody's getting thank you cards? No, no, no. Oh. Why would I thank people? To get thanks on the day, listen, thanks very much for coming. And I'll be involved in my speech. I appreciate everyone here for coming. They're all here for a reason. I oh, ain't yeah, going and spending more money on cards just to thank them again. Maria, uh, it's a waste of money. Thank you, cards. Yeah, to be honest, uh, nothing bad on yourself, but I'd say your other half will probably go ahead and get the thank yous. Because no, at the end of the day... Boy, she, she'd be the one to cut money more than me, let me tell you. you, you to be honest with you, you're just needy. <laughs> what? Mm. You're very needy. What do you mean she's very needy? She just wants to thank you. How long did she, how long did she walk in? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? How long has she walked with this bloke or how long did she walk with him for? Well, Maria. I didn't work with him. It was my other half. Uh, oh, oh, it was your other half to walk with him. And you're pissed off because he didn't say thank you to you. So he doesn't even know you. No, he didn't say th- He didn't give a thank you to either of us. Yeah, I know, but why isn't your other half on the radio talking about him? Why are you on the radio talking about him? Why are you upset? You don't know him. Yeah, but she, she's right to be obsessive. So ah, come on, will you? Robbie, can I give you a warning? Can I give you a warning? Um, yeah. You need to send out thank you cards after oh. you get. Oh, uh, have you have, have, have you discussed this with your wife to be? If I was to discuss it with my wife to be, she'd pull around and say the exact same thing. When you are on your wedding day, people are going to come up to you and say, "Ah, oh, you look brilliant today. It's great." And you say, "Thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate it." What more do you want to do? You, you send. Want me, to, you want me to have a party six months after the wedding day, like the thank you again? Stay there for a second, Robbie. Oh, you see, I told you. You know what? If this conversation has, has taught me anything, um, now, as I said, I went through all this as well. It's just weddings are a nightmare. If you're not married yet, don't do it. Uh, just elope. Uh, John, you're the last call on this. How are you? All around, Jerry. Okay, Maria, is she too sensitive or is she right to be upset? Sensitive. Sensitive. Okay. Um, I think that's the the vast majority are, uh, are saying that. So now tell me about your wedding, John. I had a friend and his missus going to be wedding and they gave me nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And they were there for the full day. Oh, a that's, a, that's a kick in the teeth, isn't it? And a few years later, I went to his wedding and I still gave him a present. No, but that's very nice. That's big of you. But I, did, I, I couldn't call him out on it. So you... Does, I'm sure he knows that you know about that. Uh, and has it created ill, Ill feeling among you? No, I'm not, not, not at all. I've never said it to him and we just get on with things. Nothing's ever been said. Uh, what about thank you cards? Uh, as far as I know, the missing thing. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> see, there you, that's every man. Every man on this show. <laughs> you're, <laughs> Jesus, John, Robbie, you're all the same. Me, we're all the same as far as I know. Stop leaving things up to the women, lads. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's just you know, us men. We are absolutely, we depend on you women so, so much. You know that? We really do. And I have to say, my wife is brilliant for stuff like that. She made sure everything. Uh, the only thing that I did um, for the wedding, for our wedding, was organise the fireworks for the night. I don't mean the actual, I mean actual fireworks, not a row. I mean, I organised fireworks and I helped book the uh the honeymoon but she did absolutely everything uh, and I've texted her in the last two minutes and I just got a text back I texted her to say did you do thank you cards for our wedding and the message I got back from her was and I'll read it out here's what it says yes Jeremy so I may or may not see you uh, tomorrow on the uh, on the radio no I will I will be back tomorrow <laughs>
But I'm just going to have to... Uh, basically, what she's saying is, yes, of course I did. How dare you even suggest that I didn't? Um, but there you go. Um, if you learn one thing from today's show, it's uh, some people can be offended, like Maria, if they don't get thank you cards. That has been Dublin Talks for this Monday. I hope you enjoyed the show. We're back again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If there's something you want brought up on tomorrow's show, if there's something that's happening uh, in your world, something that's happening in your family that you want to discuss with us, why not contact us? The best way to do it is on Facebook. Our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 10. Up next is Barry Dome with some great tunes to get you through the afternoon, including these.